welcome to Brahms. So let's have it.
play. Really fantastic. I want everybody to clap who's listening. This is great playing. The reason I'm stopping you is because this is not a performance. It's an exploration. It's an inquiry. It's a conversation about music. I just want to point out something. You're doing extremely well, and you're doing many, many things that are often not done. You've obviously thought very deeply about it, and Bruce has guided you to think very deeply about it. The element that is missing to me is freedom of timing and a real sense of being in two. And uh, the reason I stopped you there, because bum, 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 I was feeling that feeling of four. And you never want to feel this in four. I mean, there actually are one or two moments, but mostly. <laughs> even in one. And one of the things that I want to share with you is something that we've been exploring in the class, which is very exciting, which is how do you deal with that opening? Because the tendency is to want to play it quite slowly. <laughs> because it feels very expansive it feels as though and most trios play it very slowly you don't but as a result you play it a little flippantly as if it wasn't as deeply felt as it could be for instance if you listen to the old trios like Mara Hess I grew up on that great trio uh, recording with Mara Hess and the great recording with Istamin and Rose they all play this opening very slowly which is clearly not what he meant when he said adage, uh, 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 con brio, allegro con brio. So you're betwixt and between a little bit. You're not quite in the allegro con brio feel, which I know you want, and the same ex expansiveness of timing. So what I want you to do is to do the first ending and play the first ending, say, from here... Uh, if you would do it from, say, um, di -da -di -da, uh, go on, do where you go from, um, um, -da -di -da -da -di -da -da -di -da. you're right, from there. So two bars before the first ending, and then go back to the, to the beginning. Exactly. So what the first ending is, and we've talked about this in the, with the group, with other pieces, that the first ending is a kind of ritardando. Right? I mean, it's not written in ritardando, but it's like a ritardando. And what happens is that this last F sharp that you have is actually an M. It, that's the final chord of that ritardando. So what I'd love you to do is do the f just the first ending, and instead of going on, play this chord as if it was the last chord in the piece. Right. That, if I may say that's a little bit too much, you hardly need that much, but just a little and then end there. Just one more time. And 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 then stop so if it were an end and then the B changes its mind it becomes we call that an elision where the music is ending on one note and on the same note it starts again and at that point when you start after you done then you could really move over the whole bar all right so same thing again and one, two, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Now, here's the 
here's the second thing to tell you. When you get to the triplet, pa 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 the tempo you're doing is a terrific tempo. It's around 130s. So no, that is quite fast. So now the question is, can you do the opening at the same tempo that you do the middle section? And with this manipulation of making this an end, a real Combrio feeling. Should we try that one more time? First ending. That's a Combrio feeling. Have you got it? That's a Combrio feeling. That's the secret. To take the fast music, that's the tempo for the piece. Everybody feels that approximately that way. But very few people have solved the problem of the opening. We just solved it. Okay, you got it? So the secret one, when you come to it, after. And that's why he has a slur over two bars. Right, so did, and play piano, not pianissimo. So first ending. And... One, two, and one, and two, two. There we go. So fantastic, we got it. That's the tempo, and that works beautifully. And it, and it feels now. I want to introduce something to you, lot, which is something that I came across years ago, a notion which is called one buttock playing. One buttock playing is when you play either on one buttock or on the other buttock. <laughs> but you, you, you play on two buttocks. And so the music stays fairly straight. If you could think... I remember when I used to play this, never on two buttocks, always on one. I can't remember which buttock I did it, but it was always one or the other. So can we try? I'm not going to come close because I'm not allowed to, but I just want to sit there. Would you do once again? Would you do the first ending again? And one, bum, bum, one, two, one, and two. That feels great, doesn't it? A sweeping sound. In the piano, I'll tell you an amazing story. I was young, I can't remember, 18 and 19 maybe, and with my first wife, we went to play to an old lady. Um, she was 96, and her name was Madame Gombrich, and she was the pianist of Adolf Busch. Adolf Busch was the greatest violinist of his era, and she was his pianist. And we played for her, Brahms, E minor sonata. And I remember two things she said. Um, I remember uh, several things, but two things particularly. 
One moment she said, in this moment it should be an outburst of tenderness. <laughs> that was a great moment. The other moment that I remember, I'll never forget, was she said, uh, in this moment I remember Brahms uh, made a crescendo here. <laughs> She'd heard Brahms play it. Uh, isn't that amazing? So we should remember, that was, m I was, I'm 82 now, that w I was 18 and she was 80, so that takes us back. But it's not that far away. So what we learned from those old people, from that generation, was the immense warmth and richness of Brahms's sound. And it's been passed down to us, and we know how it is. And it's never ba 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 ba. It's always whoa 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 whoa. Always warm. And you notice how much he uses the bottom of the instrument, the low part of the instrument. So sonority, richness, is absolutely crucial. So the combination of this moving tempo, one buttock playing, an incredibly warm sound, and you'll win the fish off competition without any question. Uh, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> but you understand, those elements, this tremendous fervent passion, fiery passion and line and warmth, especially in the piano. So you feel this, ooh, just, and never rushed. When, when it's moving, it's because the line is moving. It's never, never uh, noty, rushing like that. So if you try one more time from the beginning, this time, we're going to begin as it, were, as it begins, the normal beginning, without the first ending, but you're going to think the first ending. All right, so I'm going to do the first ending, and you're going to come in with it. Right, so I go, one, two, one, and two, one, and two. freedom passion and freedom great great well done well done um i just wanted to get uh, find a place oh that's the allegro con brio feeling again burning yearning right it was tremendous intensity the people who play slow tempo for this are at a huge disadvantage in a passage like that but you've got a great tempo and so you can get that feeling yes 
surging with energy. Should we go from there? Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Is there, is there some way you can be more? It's a little bit um, placid. You don't want to be placid. If you want to be a banker, be placid. But this music, surging. Should we try once again? Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can I suggest you? Very fast vibrato. Yes, That's much faster than we want to play the opening. But with rubato, it's perfect. Tempo is perfect. Isn't that great? Good. Do one more time the opening. And I want to suggest something. Just a moment. Can I just show you? Yeah. This is sound. That if you can get that warm, weighted sound, Brahms. Apparently weighed about 280 pounds. <laughs> yeah, heavy. When he, when he was old. Do you know how old he was when he wrote this? Ni 19 years old. <laughs> he rewrote it later. But his first, he wrote that phrase once. He was 19. Do one more time from the beginning. One, two, one and two, and one and two. two. Yeah, you can make a richer sound on that F sharp. Show up, show up. Play an F sharp. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pure. Even more, more. Yes, there, there's your F sharp. One, two. Here it is. Two. Yes. Oh, one last thing. Let the E fall. Tip head time. And then once again. F sharp play. Yes, there it is too. Yes.
no sense of four not even of two and that was great it was a real bravo I mean that that's terrific when you hear all of you and your sound became so much more alive and interesting and passionate you get on one buttock and you'll blow them out of the, <laughs> out of the you, know, you, you know that yo-yo never is on two buttocks you know that he, he never he never plays on two buttocks he's always on one Oh, definitely haven't played the shelves since. It's so heartbroken. Could leave the cello alone. Do from there one more time. And see how much you could burn the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 has to end. That was great. That was great. Really heartbreaking once again. Third one. Now she's 
ready. You've got her ready. Tell you to do that. <laughs> but the other thing is for the tempo to be such that each bar is like a beat. Right? Each bar is like a beat. This was great. You play like that anywhere, it doesn't matter where you are. People will be moved. They'll be overwhelmed by the beauty of this music. It feels great, doesn't it? And it's one tempo, so you never have to choose. You take lots of time and then it's like pulling a piece of elastic and then you let go of the elastic and it goes back into tempo. You don't have to gauge, you don't have to think. Actually, you just play. So let's just do that again so everybody hears how you do that. Long note with the three. You couldn't possibly do it at the tempo that most people play because you could never get those three notes in. So should we try second day? Bravo, the piano playing fabulous piano. Piano. Incredible. A trio, a trio can only be as good as its pianist. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, really. It's amazing. I'm supposed to have a stick. <laughs> 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 
like little word. Like, you're a little word. But I, I improved. No, you don't. I mean, I'm happy. Happy. I'm happy. I'm <laughs> I was lying on my back for ten weeks, but now I can. <laughs> this, is, that, this is therapy. That's yeah. good. This is therapy. Exactly. This is therapy. Beautiful. <clears throat> Really fantastic. Should we do the second ending? Because I couldn't help stopping because I, I was just moved by your decision to play it in one bow. Moved by your decision because it's, it shows such intelligence, such respect, reverence for Brahms because, because he has a slur over the whole. That doesn't mean that every time he puts a slur you have to do it in one bow. But if you're trying to get over an idea, namely that it's not slow, so you can think of it as one breath. Actually, one beat for two bars. R really, that's what it is. So should we just do that the second any? <laughs> And that would not be possible unless they were thinking one phrase for two bars. Impossible, I mean. And the pianist has to play her triplets in order to enable them to release the bow into the other three notes. Otherwise, it, uh, it doesn't work. But this works because you're thinking. It's beautiful. Once again, same thing. <laughs> of her she's holding that note help her to hold it don't get in her way she was a little stuck waiting for you but that was a fantastic playing and your triplets with play her your triplets like she plays them do it one more time same thing a little bit fuller in the first sound so it carries you through the second bar it's a little too soft to begin once again uh, and <laughs> yes you're thinking about her and she said she looked she gave a big smile when you did that thank you she said <laughs> it's like any relationship it's caring for the other person and that's what you did just then before you said listen to me <laughs> she said what about me <laughs> all right do do one more time but the beginning now a little louder isn't that much better because then you have it's easier three and um, mm, mm, beautiful now mm, yes perfect that a total shock so the way to do it is to take a little bit more time and then <laughs> like that out of nowhere all right but that was great yours was beautiful do for you did you came in before her chord you're together with her do right on your chord <laughs> now don't give it away <laughs> Brahms violin concerto. That was great what you did. It was perfect. Wasn't that exciting? Just sudden shock. Now when you come in with your solo, 
Not slower, just freer. I mean, you try what? Bom, 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 from the 40s, you know? This is not really the recapitulation, but it is the recapitulation. It's the wrong key, right? But it's the right place. And look what he's done with that upbeat. He's turned it into a half bar, half bar note and given you a calando, and you did it beautifully. That's how he wants the opening. He doesn't want it slow. He wants it free, all right? So the moment you get to the downbeat, move. But up until it, would you do from the Kalanda this beautiful playing? Actually, you've become a different cellist in the last half hour. <laughs> I mean, you're you're suddenly you're like a bird let out of a cage. You, I mean, you're great. Don't forget how great you are, because this is your biggest. I mean, I just invented this, but I say this is your biggest enemy: is you don't think you're great, right? And you spend a lot of time telling yourself you're not great. I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But when you play like that, I mean, and you fire her up and she fires you up, it's, it's great. It's a uh, it, terrific trio. I mean, terrific trio. So do from, um, from the Calando. And then when you get to that F double sharp, oh, 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 that's so beautiful. And then hold it, hold it, and then oh, in the wrong key, but it's a re recapitulation. Do you understand what I'm saying? That it's a wrong recapitulation. Recapitulation comes later when you go into B. But he's he's cheating. Brahms is always cheating. Should we try once again, Calando? <coughs> one of the great moments in music. This one. Uh, go back a little bit. The previous letter. N. N. N is a great place. I have no idea where it is, but that's <laughs> great. <laughs> right. Okay. Here we go. Here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Oh. 
Good. Now I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that you played it beautifully. Uh, wow. And it was incredibly touching. And anybody who wasn't moved by what you played would have to check into a hospital to see if they were still alive, you know, because you were, you were playing from the bottom of your hearts, and it was great. And Brahms wrote a tempo. All right, and for me, although it's often done this way, you're losing something very important by losing connection with the rest of the piece. It's as if you've gone on holiday and forgotten all that you went through. So I would take very seriously what he says. He says, I can't see it because I don't have my glasses, but where, where are the glasses? I put them down somewhere here. Glasses, I never can find my glasses. Ah. I think I have them here. And I want you to see this. And it's not as if what you did was wrong because it was too beautiful to be wrong. You understand? Anybody who played anything as beautifully as you just did could never be said to be wrong. But here he says, um, where does he say it? Hang on, I've got to find <laughs> Sorry. Here it is. He, he says it here. No. Here. In tempo. Do you see there? He says, in tempo, ma sempre uh, sostenuto. Not slow, but just sostenuto. So we're going to do it again. Not to make what you did wrong, because it was beautiful. And the little old ladies in Vienna were happy with you. But I want you to get the feeling of after the tranquillo, do, do three bars before the tranquillo. And tranquillo means just literally that, tranquil. 
and he says poco forti ma dolci it's so he's so ambiguous in his terminology isn't he so do from the three before tran tranquilo in the piano <laughs> Now, I would do do, do it do it in tempo, but just a little freer. Right, still in two, still the same feeling. Do, once again, would you do it? I guess maybe. You see how beautiful that is, because now you're doing it with rubato, not with tempo. Tempo is a little soft, a little slower, but not much. But what's free is the timing. Do it again, one more time. Same thing. And look what he does with the upbeat, how much he cares about that upbeat. He writes, poco forte, ma dolce. Right, that's his instruction. Should we do one more time from the same place? And each, each, a lot of people out there clapping <laughs> a lot of people you know we live in boxes these days we live in little boxes little postage stamps all of us some of them are in Texas and some couple in, in Seoul Korea and all over but everybody's here now at this moment everybody because music has this power to bring everybody together and as one and you've done that it's beautiful you're great you're really great and and this is the makings of a you know, already is an extraordinary performance and if you make it your own and you know at the moment I'm still conducting because I can't stop conducting but, <laughs> but you understand just if you can feel this, this energy and the power and the passion and the warmth and always the tempo do you realize the whole thing is in one tempo now and and that's so important and and uh, uh, Unche, un, Unche, I had a correspondence with Unche Kang. She's, uh, she's in, in here. She's in, here, in this little box here. She said, what do you mean? What do you mean that a piece begins in the bars before, before it begins? The Ritadando happens in the bars before the piece begins. Unche, do you see what it was? The, the Ritadando begins in the first ending. But when you play the piece for the first time, that's also after the first ending. So when you play that first F sharp, it's the result of music that's happened. The piece hasn't started yet, but the players have to feel it. So when you get to that F sharp, and it can't be warm enough. I mean, he's great, but play like Yo-Yo Ma. You know, just, oh, he, oh, he lives in the next street. He, 
can almost hear you <laughs> with that warmth and richness. And so then, let me explain something. The reason the people play so slowly, the, the famous people, you know, all the famous musicians, they play this so slowly is because they want to make those passages sound expressive. Like Mara Hess, I never forget. But what happens to the rest of the piece? So this way, by doing rubato and by being free, we can have the beginning as free as you want, and then when the allegro comes, it feels exactly right. Do, do, do you understand? I mean, this is your first conversation we've ever had, but I must say you're extraordinarily responsive. Really extraordinarily responsive. Are you going to be a professional pianist? You don't. You're going to be a scientist or something. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the people with these monumental gifts who go off somewhere else. <laughs> anyway, you're great. And it's a pleasure to work with you and to play with and listen to you. And really fantastic. So a little applause, please, for everybody. And I hope you get the enthusiasm that's in this group because they've been wrestling with these ideas for weeks now. And this is what it means. This is what you get when you play this way. Uh, you get this kind of music making, which is all that matters in life. You know, I had a ca catastrophic experience yesterday. I won't bother telling any of you about it. It was uh, like one of those life catastrophes that you think, how are you ever going to recover? Um, and during this music, it was so irrelevant. I did. It had to do with money and my pension and my future. Who cares? <laughs> you know, this is what matters. This is what matters. It's so beautiful, and you're such a gift, so generous in your playing and in your being and your listening. And thank you. So let's go to Mala. Should we go to Mala? Put your instruments away, and we'll go to Mala. Wow, wow, that's very exciting. That's it's a great performance. Really. Was it?